Hey everybody, welcome back to some more Dune Spice Wars tips and tricks. First and foremost, let's just crack straight into it with some hotkeys. We'll start simple today and work our way through. If you press the I key, you get a great overlay on the map. You can see extra building slots available on all of your villages, as well as wind strength and any unique resources in the territory. Super handy at a distance. Zooming in a little closer, however, and this one is specifically related to the airfields, these wonderful districts with a relatively high upkeep in the early game in particular, but man, are they strong. They let you move around the world between different territories, providing that they have an airfield set up in them as well. Do note, it'll also cost you a little bit of fuel to operate this bad boy, and the shuttles themselves that transport units also have a one-time cost. The tip here is if you press the X key, you can see the radius of all, or the circumference of all, airfields on the map. Again, super useful to zoom out and get a look where everything is. It's also very handy because you'll notice that the range overlaps into adjacent territories as well. This allows for some fun gamification where you can fly into an enemy zone or something stupid like that. It also enables you to be a little bit clever with the geography in Dune Spice Wars. While this map isn't necessarily as diverse as something like Civilization VI or Humankind with all the different biomes and terrains and elevations and so on and so forth, you can see here as I fly across and take a shuttle across to the other side of the world, well, I mean, a couple of tiles away, Anyway, you can see that the world is relatively flat, right? It's mostly just sand and desert. However, sometimes flying in, you can fly in above or below some of these high cliff faces and really get strategic advantage. Next up, I, and really building on that strategic advantage thing, I want to talk about some specific things you really need to be harnessing if you're playing a few houses. And in particular, and I think this one is really neat, moving on from the airfields, is the Fremen's Thumper. Place it down, it will attract a worm. And much like the airfield, but with a much smaller circumference, you will have noticed, you really have to like cram in the units to fit them all in. You have to be quite careful. But you'll notice it's essentially a free airfield, except I don't have to use it to fly to one of my own airfields. This ability is so strong on defense and offense for moving units around the map, and it replenishes itself too after 5,000 hegemony. So it's very, very good. You will have noticed I've transitioned over to some smugglers gameplay. That's because part two of this tip is to make sure that you make the most of their special thing as well. Their underworlds that you can build on all enemy villages, okay? Any enemy, slap it down, and then you can kind of treat this as though your main center. You can build influence producing things in the statecraft section. In the military section, you can use it to weaken an enemy's bases, trigger it with a trap, so to speak, so that when you invade, it's 50% weaker. On the economic side of things, you'll be pillaging or scraping off the top a little bit of spice, a little bit of salari, a little bit of reward for you. You'll also get a wonderful overview as the smugglers, as you can see on this map right here, about all of the resources that your opponents are earning. Next up, kind of like an opponent, it's the Siege, the sort of barbarian tribes of this strategy game, if you will. They exist, they have military units that are fairly strong, and crucially, you can ally with them. It's pretty important to do if you have the spare resources, because the benefits can be very strong and the upkeep is relatively low, at around 1 to 2 authority usually. Shouldn't be an issue, particularly as you move through the game. Now, when you form an alliance with them, you'll do a few things. You'll potentially get some extra votes on your side. You'll potentially sway their units away from attacking you or towards attacking someone else. And as you can see here, at 100 uh, relationship score with them, you'll be able to get their special alliance bonus as well as establishing an agent with them for even more fun. However, I think that has been changed in a recent update. So we'll have to check in on that and see how it's moving. I think you can form the alliance potentially in other ways. Moving along to destruction and mayhem, I've had lots of questions about how to destroy an enemy base. Does it heal? What things can I do to increase my chances at destroying it? Because these things are absolute power houses, particularly if they're surrounded by enemy bombards and villages. Like you can see here, this village is bombarding me. My tips for destroying an enemy base are as follows. Firstly, take note of your supply and don't do a stupid thing like these units who have ran through a territory without it. 
okay? You need supply in order to heal. Unit supply is incredibly important in Dune Spice Wars in this harsh world. So make sure you have unit supply and you should be in a stronger position. Next up, you might want to use some of the cheaper operations that are available in Dune Spice Wars. A ceasefire in your back pocket could be useful if you need to pull units away, but even the relatively cheap supply drop to add supply to your units, or its inverse to take supply away from theirs, or even just reduce enemy power by 20%. You should also check the council. Some resolutions here can lower or increase manpower or combat strength or power of your units. It's a sort of a mixed bag of trying to pull as many levers as you can. Finally, you might want to use some advanced operations, not just for taking cities, but in general. Defensive sabotage reduces its power by 50% of the enemy base, and crowd manipulation is another really, really favorite one of mine. It causes an insurgency in a village, kind of stopping your opponent's spice production if you use it well. You'll need to make sure that you have the appropriate number of agents that line up with the requirements. And once you get towards the end of these advanced operations, you'll be able to use the infiltration cells operation, a three-part, uh, somewhat expensive op that can ultimately lead to domination victory without having to destroy a base by assassinating the head of the house. I have more on that in my victory video. If you'd like to go and watch that, it's on my channel. I cover all of the victory conditions in Dune Spice Wars. However, just before I move away from this, it is important to note that the assassination missions in particular come with complications. Normal operations can see your agents captured. These ones, as you can see, are much more extreme and varied. Next, I want to talk trade. And in particular, I have a couple of spicy tips here, pun absolutely intended. Early on, you probably won't be able to make great use of those operations. You probably won't need them to take weak villages, and you probably won't be fighting with any AI opponents yet because they won't be close enough. Here, I recommend trading away intel. It's usually hotly requested by all of the AI, and it seems to be highly valued. You can get good bang for your buck, whether it's trading it for some emergency spice to pay your taxes on time, or swapping it for just really the fundamentals like Plascrete or Solari, or alternatively, of course, you could swap it for influence, increasing your influence generation and standing at the council. Speaking of, let's talk the council. Another topic I've had loads of questions about, not just for the victory condition, the Dune governorship, but actually how it works in general. So here's my advice. Some general tips for the council and diplomacy. First and foremost, you'll notice along the top here, there are these charters. In the middle, it's the victory condition, but around it are very powerful council charter positions. Water Sellers Union, uh, Solari production is increased by 100% of your available water, so water becomes money. Here is the eye of the council, you get two extra agents with a special trait. The speaker of the council can re-roll a resolution, and the judge can train a very powerful unit, a Landsard unit. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. These positions, some of them, tend to require standing with the council, or at least earlier in the game they do. As you move through, there'll be other requirements. They're varied. You can check them by mousing over them. It might be things like controlling a certain number of territories or having a certain number of territories under your control. These charters will come up, as you can see here, just like any other resolution. Here we can vote for Dune Governorship or Water Regulation. The two maybe don't seem to run logically in parallel, but it's important to really keep your eye out for these positions. The Dune Governorship, of course, will ultimately result in you winning the game if you can stay alive long enough afterwards, but the others come up much earlier on. So pay attention. If you see one of these positions coming available, it's worth going for. Generally, if you're playing as Atreides or Harkonnen, you'll have votes by default. The smugglers can get some a little bit later as well. You should use those at every opportunity. And then you can also vote with influence. Anybody can generate this on their villages, and you can use that to then get some sort of diplomatic power. Moving along, as you finally maybe vote for yourself as governor, a faster way to win than hegemony, in my experience, You'll also need to make sure that you're ready to defend, because this will naturally probably attract some opposition. Finally, and speaking of the Landsard Council, but in unit form, don't forget the Landsard Guard is very powerful. You can vote for these as a resolution to get three free ones. You can also, if you elect yourself into the right charter, build some of these bad boys. By default, 
It's the only way to get them through the council. And they are very strong. But the thing that you might not realize about them is one of the things that makes them incredibly strong is their upkeep changes. To produce them and uphold them, you need influence. You do not need water or manpower, the two normal restrictions that restrict your military. Take care with that, though, because you might end up like me here with a massive excess of manpower if you're not using it properly. Thank you very much for watching. I'm really enjoying covering Dude Spice Wars. I can't wait to see you in the next live stream or gameplay tips video. I'll see you then.